Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my monthly anti-haul. So this month it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to combine June and July. I don't know what happened, but time definitely flew by and I feel like I just need to combine these two so I can play catch up. So if you're on a low buy or a no buy, this is an amazing video for you to watch because we're just going to talk about all the new releases that I think are so ugly or I decided to pass on for some reason or another. Think of it as a way to provide some balance in my existence because you guys know usually I am reviewing and playing with a lot of eyeshadow palettes, a lot of blush, all of the things. I love new makeup so this is how I provide balance to myself and also pat myself on the back for all the things I didn't buy. So if that sounds good to you, I'm going to go ahead and slide on over so we can chat. Okay, before I start roasting, I do want to remind you guys to enter my August monthly giveaway. Every month I've been giving away any extra PR that I have or any extra goodies that I have to one lucky winner. So go ahead and enter because it's always fun to give one of you guys some makeup and say thank you for supporting me. So I feel like I've already anti-hauled this or I've roasted it in a new makeup releases video but this is the Cheetah collection from Shantikai. So we have the Cheetah Eye Trio which genuinely I thought was a face palette but no it's an eyeshadow palette so we've got two matte neutrals and a pearl shimmer shade. So it's a creamy vanilla, a iridescent shade and a matte doe brown and that's gonna retail for $78 which is so wild to think about because the two eyeshadow palettes I have on today as a bundle retail for $100 and there's way more interesting shades in that palette. So it always blows my mind how much brands like Shantify charge for something very ordinary. I would love, I would love to pull the curtain back and actually see how much it costs for them to make this. I'm sure it's made like in a very nice factory in Italy and all of the things but still it really makes you wonder sometimes. They're also launching some lip oils which retail for $54 so there's a peachy nude, an earthy pink nude and a soft cinnamon. These shades look very beautiful. I have tried a bit of Chantecaille's makeup. I was sent some in the past and I just don't get it. Maybe in a few years I'll understand somehow I'll mature some more and it'll all make sense to me but for right now I just don't get the price point of these particular luxury makeup items. Next we have a collab between the brand Wonder Skin and Chipotle. So this is a celebration of National Avocado Day with a new lip stain color. I'm low-key wondering if this is like a really bad April Fool's joke but they have like a green lip and it says that it is inspired by guacamole and green foil and I guess you can like peel it off and it leaves a rosy nude stain so that's interesting I mean it's gimmicky <sighs> and don't get me wrong I love Chipotle <laughs> especially when it's made well I feel like our local Chipotles are going through a few things and like it was one of my biggest cravings during my pregnancy, but a lot of the time I was disappointed. But let me not give you a dissertation about Chipotle right now. Let's just talk about this product. It looks absolutely revolting. The shade that's left afterwards is cute, but what an idea. I know there's these lip stain products where you like peel it away. I've never tried one myself. I can say that I'm actually very into it. I think it looks kind of ugly if I'm being completely honest with you guys. <laughs> okay, so the Naked palette, I feel like I roasted. And listen, I'm not gonna lie, I thought I had an Ulta coupon for $20 off a $100 purchase. And I did have said Ulta coupon, except I didn't realize it expired at the end of July. So I was sitting in August going like, where is that coupon I was gonna use? And I hadn't quite had enough stuff to get to $100. So then I was like, should I buy the Naked palette? And I was like, absolutely not. I would be lying if I said I wasn't curious because I am a little bit curious to know if this will like make me feel something. But I like vividly remember using this palette and I think it was absolutely lovely at the time, but it just doesn't make sense 
for me to own this right now, like especially because I still have my original Naked palette. It's not like I'm going to pull it out and use it, but it just doesn't make sense for me to own it again. So I am going to pass on it, but I definitely did think about buying it. And I just think it's so interesting that Urban Decay decided to re-release it. I feel like it's started so many trends and so many people are like, look at the makeup I still have that I used to own from 2016. And I feel like I have quite a bit of makeup that I've had for some time, but I'm so bad at remembering things. So I probably wouldn't be able to tell you, but it just, it feels like it was so long ago, but I keep thinking about it because people are saying like, oh my gosh, like full glam makeup is in. And I think back sometimes I'm like, I really haven't changed a thing. Like I still do my makeup. Like it's 2016. I feel like I should have maybe evolved a little bit, but this is my style. I'm sticking to it. And I don't know, can you guys relate? Because I feel like so much of TikTok is like, what's trending? What's trending? What's the new product? And don't get me wrong, I love new products, but I still feel like even though there's new stuff, I still do my makeup the same way I used to do. Maybe a wing liner or two less because I used to wear wing liner back in the day every single day. I don't do that as much, but I feel like very little of how I do my makeup has changed. So I'm curious to know for the sake of science, do you guys feel like you've changed how you do your makeup a lot as time has gone on? Or do you feel like you also have the same makeup routine? I'm so curious to know what you guys think. Okay, another product that definitely deserves some roasting is this new collection from Pat McGrath. So everyone was all excited because she was sneak peeking some quads. And listen, we've been here before with Pat McGrath. We've learned that we must manage our expectations because the lady just keeps letting me down time after time. Now, I was a little bit curious when I saw this quad with the pinks and the mints and I was like, Ooh, maybe, maybe I will. But at the end of the day, it's $56 for four shades. And again, I can't help myself. But the eyeshadow palettes I have on today, there are two palettes from the brand Inslee Rain. I did three looks with the two palettes because I was so excited about them. And those palettes are like $50 and $55. And I know Pat McGrath is in a different league. She's a luxury brand. I'm comparing it to an indie brand. It's like apples and oranges. But these Ensley Rain palettes remind me of palettes from the original motherships that like had those color stories that made me fall in love with Pat McGrath and it's something she just doesn't do anymore. So anyway, long story long, I just feel like the colorful one is pretty boring. The neutral one is definitely a great palette for everyday usage, but I have these palettes over and over again, so it was an easy skip for me. Okay, next we have from Makeup Forever, one of my favorite little brands. They launched these eyeshadow palettes as well and I remember when the makeup forever eyeshadow line was so hype like all the big booty gurus were talking about their stuff their holiday palettes were iconic but these two are definitely more like everyday palettes they're definitely not up my alley so it's very easy for me to say pass on these um, but if you're looking for some everyday colors I guess this could be interesting to you for me, it's an easy skip. Okay, next we have from Prada, they're launching a setting powder and a primer. So the powder is $90, the primer is $50, and these are basically mattifying products. And then the primer is a blurring primer that minimizes pores. I feel like $50 is not so bad for a primer, but the powder is pretty wildly expensive. I feel like since it's a green primer, I'm like, is it a color correcting primer? I don't think so. I think it's a regular powder. It's just like an interesting color. So it really attracts my attention. But overall, I think that I'm very happy with the powders I have. So it's another easy pass for me. We also have from Glamlight, they launched some new powders. So this is the Bake and Set Powder from Glamlight. It's a loose powder for baking and setting your makeup. I think this is so fun because we've seen Glamlight do so many limited edition collections and it's always like eyeshadow palettes, a setting spray, some lashes, a gloss, a scrub, just 
a lot of things that are not permanent to their line. So hopefully this setting powder collection is, you know, going to be a part of their permanent line for a long time. One thing I always wonder is like, even if you are a big fan of Glam Light, what happens if you fall in love with something that is limited edition? How are you going to get it once they stop making it or if it sells out? Like, it's such a horrible thing to happen <laughs> when your favorite product gets discontinued or doesn't get restocked. So I hope that they are planning to have this powder line for a while. I feel like Glam Light definitely caters to the TikTok audience, people that are looking for things that are going to go viral, people that are looking for things that are cutesy and like fun to kind of make like quick little videos with. So I feel like that's kind of their target audience right now. And they're paying less attention to YouTube, which is totally fine because I feel like the YouTube audience isn't really looking for glam light either. So I'm happy to see that they've kind of found a new core audience. But overall, I just wasn't interested enough in acquiring another powder to want to try this out either. Okay, next we have from Hermes, their beautiful fall collection. Honestly, I don't see anything wrong with this collection. I think it's very cute. I think it's perfect for fall. It's very well curated. I love the tones. I feel like I would love to wear these colors in the fall and the lippies look beautiful. We have three shades. So there's a shiny shade that is a copper and pink pearl. We've got a matte that is a reddish beige that is reminiscent of clay. Honestly, that shade looks lovely. And then there is a sheer matte, which is a deep red. We also have a eye palette, which has beautiful blue, a clay shade, a green, and a bone colored shade, and then two nail polishes. I talked about this in my new makeup releases. Again, I think this is really cute. I just don't really have the budget to be buying an Hermes makeup collection, so it's an easy pass for me. We have more powder to chat about. So LYS launched their loose setting powder. I was like a little bit curious about this packaging because it's a triangle shape. I do feel like they did a good job with the packaging of the powder. Now there's some things that they do that the triangle shape doesn't really work for, but I think this looks very elevated. It's very cute and it's still quite affordable. I think these powders are like under $30 for sure. It doesn't say the price on this trend mood post, but it does say that this is a finely milled powder for flawless long lasting wear with silky smooth texture, glides effortlessly onto your skin, leaving behind a velvety, finish that feels weightless, effortless, blurs imperfections, and it comes in seven shades. So LYS is one of the more affordable brands at Sephora, and they're a black-owned brand. So we love to see it, and it sounds wonderful. I need another powder like I need a hole in my head, so I did decide to pass on it. We also saw <laughs> the Natasha Denona Mini Rose Palette, and I'm laughing because I so vividly remember when they announced this palette, I saw the email and I was like, wait, I already have this, right? And then I realized it's actually a new mini palette, not something she was really promoting. And I did see this the other day. I think it's now at like Sephora, Ulta, Beautylish, everywhere. And I was like, should I get this with my Ulta coupon? And turns out my Ulta coupon expired, so I couldn't get it anyway because there was no way I was going to spend full price on this. But yeah, I just feel like Natasha is in her rosy gal era and I'm ready for another Metropolis palette. Like I've been ready for another Metropolis palette since the last Metropolis palette came out. So I would really like for another fun color story from Natasha, but I get it. She's got to pay her bills. She's got staff to pay. So if the neutral palettes sell, if the rosy palettes sell, it is what it is. Same for Pat McGrath. I'm just saying I'm not going to buy it. That's all. Okay, next from Made by Mitchell, we have the Mattitude lipsticks. These are nude lipsticks, and we've got a bunch of shades. My only criticism of this is I think the press photos look terrible. The nudes just look so, like, they look like color correctors. They don't really look like lipsticks. Granted, these shades probably work for somebody. They're just not appealing to me with these tones and these swatches. They just look so garbage. So... It's an easy skip for me. So everybody's doing these multi-use lip and cheek products. So I can't really shade anyone, 
But I will say these Dominique Cosmetics Pillow Soft Hydrating Lip and Cheek Stains are something that's a dime a dozen right now in the makeup community. So it's an easy skip for me. We also have from Kylie, she's launching a skin tint. This is a blurring elixir weightless fluid tint with light to medium coverage. Again, skin tints all the rage. I know it's so revolutionary. I do think she did something cute with this packaging, but I've seen this packaging now everywhere as well. So really doesn't seem like there's anything unique about it. Easy pass for me. We've got some new fragrances from Fleur. So I actually smelled these today because I was at the mall. So I got to go into Sephora and smell the caramel skin and the coconut skin fragrance mist. I feel like these smell nice. They're okay. I might get the coconut one during like Sephora friends and family, but I am glad I got to smell them before I bought them because I don't really love the caramel one. And I thought, hey, let me just get both, but I'm glad I decided to wait and smell them in person before I spent the money. So now I know to get the coconut probably and I'll pass on the caramel. It was just a little too sweet for me and I'm not really into super sweet fragrances. We also have from Louis Vuitton, they launched the Lubelli lip oils. So these are inspired by red leather soles that are made famous by of course, the famous red bottoms of the Louboutins. So it says these are jojoba-based hydration, sheer color, high gloss formula that provides intense nourishment for up to 24 hours. These are pricey. I think that they're about 70 something dollars. I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely roasted them because the price is insane. I don't care if they're a Louboutin. I don't need to spend that much money on a lip oil. So it was an easy skip for me. Okay, these MAC lipsticks that they bought back for MAC's 40th anniversary, I think such a cool idea. I don't know if any of these are still around. I did see some of them online. I will say I'm not familiar with any of these shades. I did see a lot of people were so excited. So I think it's such a cool idea that they bought back these limited edition colors, but there was nothing there that I was super interested in. So it was an easy pass for me. Now, I don't know what it is with brands thinking that it's okay to launch Halloween collections in the freaking middle of summer. Like I'm still here for summer. I don't want to think about the fall yet. I mean, I love fall, don't get me wrong, but I can wait just a little bit. So we did see Glamlight launch their Good Guys collection. Now, technically, I don't feel like this is actually Halloween or fall. I just think probably because Glamlight did so many Halloween launches last year, we kind of like grouped it all together. But I mean, it's a very like light, airy, fun collection. The packaging's yellow. It's um, Chucky before he gets evil, right? I haven't really paid attention when I was watching the movies, but I think that's what this all entails. Anyway, it's a big collection. We had an eyeshadow palette, lip kits, lip care duo, highlighter, mirror bag, and then there's a Tiff bag as well. And you can get everything in one go around. Now, I am a Glamlight affiliate. Really enjoy the brand, but there has been a lot that they've done recently that I haven't been into. So I'm not just buying every single thing. And I did end up passing on that collection because I was just a little bit fatigued from all the rinse and repeats that Glamlight has been doing recently. I just don't want to deal with it. And I don't want to keep just buying stuff because... I'm an affiliate. I don't feel like that's necessary for me to do. So we had some new products from Skin by Kim Kardashian as well. So they launched some new highlighters as well as glosses. Honestly, these look absolutely stunning. The highlighters are $35 and they have a hybrid gel powder effect. So they look super gorgeous. They look like they would just melt into the skin, but I don't need to buy Miss Kardashian's highlighters. And we also have these gorgeous glosses. I love that they go from shade one to 10 and they're just like slightly different shades of nude. I do really like that and they're $25. So it does feel like some more affordable makeup and it looks really nice quality, but for now I'm gonna skip it. Now this is something I actually regret not buying. 
<laughs> I contemplated this. Listen, I roasted this. I said it looks like little pigs in a blanket. It's just like these adorable little blushes from Rogue Beauty. Rogue Beauty is Hailey Bieber's brand. She really needs the money, you guys. Come on, she's about to have her first child. Justin Bieber is just like, you know, trying to be the best dad he can be. And Hailey Bieber. I don't know why they just annoy me and I don't even know these people so like don't really listen to me So anyways, Hailey Bieber has this makeup line That's like super viral and everybody loves the lip glosses and the little phone cases and stuff And then she came out with these cream blushes and now I can't stop thinking about them because I think they have such cute shades So we've got Piggy Juice Box by Steve Marg, which is such a pretty bright coral We've got Freckle Sleepy Girl and Toasted Teddy I think a lot of these are actually sold out. Either which way, I don't need it, so I'm gonna pass on it, but this was one of the things that I kind of wish I had jumped on because they're so just interesting to me. I love cream blush. Like I said, I'm a self-proclaimed blush demon on YouTube and I love trying different blushes, so yeah, I feel like I missed out on something there. Let me know if you tried it. What are your thoughts? Okay, we have this gloss balm from Fenty. This is the shade major flex and it's like a really pretty like black and purpley shade i think this looks absolutely stunning especially on these deep skin tones actually it looks good on every skin tone that they've swatched on but particularly on this deep 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 skin tone it just looks absolutely stunning so i love that and i love how fenty keeps catering to different types of skin tones i think that's so important and i love to see it so I want to say shout out, but I didn't buy it because I don't like shades like that on my skin tone. Okay, again, Blush Demon was wanting to buy these, but they looked so light and so gently pigmented that I decided to pass. These are from ABH. They're the Blurring Serum Blushes. The packaging looks so interesting, very like upscale, but I decided to pass. These are a hydrating soft matte liquid blush with a radiant blurred finish instantly diffuses imperfections for radiant bouncy skin. So they have guava, baby pink, peach, hibiscus, and plum. And yeah, these just look so light. They almost look like they would blend away. So I did decide to skip on these. We also have this palette from Polite Society. They came out with a palette called the VIP palette. And honestly, this thing has the most awful packaging ever. And it's basically just a neutral palette with like a row of neutrals and then some browns and then like a purple and like a dark brown and another like mauve shade. So super duper basic. The palette retails for $39, which isn't terrible, but I feel like you could just buy a palette from ColourPop instead of spending that kind of money on a polite society palette. Okay, we have to roast this palette. So this was Max Pride Month palette. Now, nothing wrong with celebrating Pride, do you? But this is the Pride Eyeshadow Vault and it's celebrating 40 years of Mac Pride. And it says 40 new and best-selling shades. 100% of the palette's price supports MAC Viva Glam. I don't know about this palette, you guys. It seems like such a eyesore. I love the outer packaging, but the inside with the rainbow, it's just a little too cheesy for me. I prefer like the Blend Bunny and Ellis collab as far as rainbow palettes and the original Blend Bunny palette, but this one is an easy skip for me. It's so ugly. I'm so sorry, but that's just how I feel about it. Okay, y'all, there's tons more makeup products to roast, but I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me talk about some of the makeup that I skipped out on in the month of June and July, so I'll definitely be back in August. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. Don't forget to enter my August monthly giveaway. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, whatever you're up to, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye!